color. It's all relative. Part 7. LAB and back again. We know that color can be separated into three components, hue, saturation, and lightness. The fact that color can, in theory, be separated into hue, saturation, and lightness doesn't mean we have to manipulate colors in our photographs that way. Most photographers manipulate the pixels in a photograph using the RGB color model, but that's just one option for manipulating color in a photograph. CMYK is another option. It's the standard for offset printing. If you send your photos to an offset printer, you'll want to be familiar with CMYK. It has some other features we'll address later, too. For example, working with skin tones can sometimes benefit from a trip to CMYK. And we've talked about HSL and its close cousin HSV. They do the most complete job of isolating hue and saturation from lightness, but that's a color model typically available in painting and illustration programs, not photo editors like Photoshop. Professional tools like Photoshop also offer the LAB color model as an option. In the LAB color model, and its preferred pronunciation is LAB and not lab, color is separated into three components. There is a separate lightness component, a green magenta dimension, and a blue yellow dimension. Notice with LAB that hue and saturation are not independent. Dan Marcullus gave LAB a big buzz in the Photoshop world with his book Photoshop LAB Color, The Canyon Conundrum and Other Adventures in the Most Powerful Color Space. Dan tends to be quite passionate about the ideas he expresses, and this book is no exception. It's easy to conclude from this book that you can convert from RGB to LAB with no worries. After viewing this episode, you might conclude converting to LAB is not 100% worry-free. And to be fair to Dan, his book does have a sprinkling of caveats. It's just they're easy to overlook with all the fierce partisanship. There's some equally fierce partisanship warning about the perils of manipulating photographs in LAB mode. They'll leave you with the impression that your photograph is in danger of serious degradation from a round trip to LAB and back. I'm going to spend a couple of video episodes exploring the trade-offs to manipulating color photographs in LAB. In this episode, we'll look at what happens when we make a round trip to LAB. LAB and back. On one side, there are the LAB mavens. You can go to LAB, work there, come back to RGB, and all will be okay. The kind of comment you'll hear is, I routinely convert to LAB. I've never edited a photo where working in LAB wasn't easier and a better result. On the other side, there are LAB skeptics. Working with a photo in LAB means two trips through the Adobe Color Engine. And the kind of comment you'll hear there is, your photograph is going to degrade as a result of going to LAB and back to RGB. In my opinion, both sides are right. In most cases, you can go from RGB to LAB, work on your photograph, and then return from LAB to RGB without any worries. You'll get a pleasing photograph and probably will not notice any visible damage from your visit to LAB. Even so, a single round trip to LAB and back, just the trip itself, no editing whatsoever, will result in some artifacts. And we'll spend the rest of this episode looking at what I mean. Here we have the pseudo Macbeth color checker card from the previous episode. In this case, it's the sRGB version. You might not have noticed a change here, but this is the same image after a single round trip to LAB and back. No editing, just a conversion to LAB mode and back to RGB mode in Photoshop. Here they are, side by side to make the comparison easier. Before I tell you, which do you think is the original? Which made the round trip to LAB mode? The original is on the left. The version that went through the Adobe Color Engine, which many people just refer to as ACE or ACE, is on the right. Keep in mind, there were two trips through the Adobe Color Engine, one to go to LAB and one to return to RGB. Think these two images are identical? Well, not quite. Here's the two histograms. There are differences. The image is very slightly darker, especially in the reds, and less so in the blues. When we look at the numeric values, it looks like a lot of change is happening. Well, lots of pixels are, in fact, changing. Here I took a screen capture 
of an inverted difference layer. I had to whack the levels around to make it obvious which pixels were different. Now let's go back to our visual comparison. Is one example appreciably better than another? In terms of their visual appearance, I'd say no. One is definitely noisier, and that is something to bear in mind. That round trip to LAB could possibly come back to bite us if we make more significant edits after we return from LAB. Would that possibility preclude me from making a trip to LAB for some editing if I thought I'd get a more pleasing photograph as a result? No. What if we remove the noise before we go on our adventure in LAB? Again, visually, there's no obvious difference. On the left, no noise reduction was applied, and on the right, noise reduction was applied. Both cases, one round trip to LAB and back, no editing. That doesn't rescue us either. As a matter of fact, noise reduction software works with a color model that's similar to LAB. That way, it can separate luminosity noise from color noise. I didn't exactly play fair. I played a bit of a trick on you. The sample is not especially noisy. What you see as noise is largely quantization errors. Okay, there's some jargon. Just what are quantization errors? Well, in this case, it's artifacts that result from operations on an 8-bit photo. Here's the difference between the original and a round trip to lab when our photograph is 16 bits instead of 8 bits per channel. This is an inverted difference layer. Oh, there are differences, but you sure won't see them. Go ahead, try. Here's the original on the left and 16 bits round trip on the right. Again, visually, there's no obvious difference. The numeric values differ, especially in the reds and less in the blues. If you're going to work in LAB, you should make your trip before you reduce the bit depth for your photograph. This is another reason to shoot RAW rather than JPEG. If your photos will potentially go through the color engine, you want more bit depth. We're not done with LAB just yet. In the next episode, I'll show you that while LAB handles saturation better than RGB in most cases, it can be a little quirky. I'm Glenn Mitchell from The Lights Right. Cheers.